Hey guys, in this video, I will show you how to create the OpenAI real-time API with the uh, WebRTC. I already created one before with the Java Spring Boot, so you guys could take a look at this one. Uh, someone asked me if I could uh, create a, a Python uh, as a backend, so that is why I created this video. So let's start with the video. Uh, I already uh, put the code over here, over the uh, GitHub, so you guys could take a look. I have the Java backend, now I have the um, Python backend. So the main code is over here. Let's uh, start the demo. So first of all, let's start a new project, a new project with the uh, PyCharm. Okay, now add a new file. Just uh, copy the code from here to your IDE. Okay, and uh, this is uh, the uh, Flask um, project. So you need to uh, install this library, Flask library, and we'll add this one because we need to support uh, cross domain. We need uh, the reset for API. So let's do it. Let's install this one. Uh, it's it's kind of like a proxy. So uh, it's the client side will resist, request the SDP, and uh, this mini server is uh, trying to connect with the OpenAI and request the SDP. So here that is how it's kind of working. I store the API key in my uh, local environment in my local uh, environment variable. So I don't want to display over here. So once it's a request, uh, this URL is will uh, request uh, to the OpenAI use this URL. It's kind of like a proxy. This the I don't want this to on the client side on the web browser side because I don't want to anyone say the um, API key. So you could do this one on the server side. Just miss something. Let's install this one. Okay. Now I think that's it. It's very simple. Just the fourteen three line of code and uh, some comment. Okay, let's start. Now it's start. Uh, the next one we need to uh, open the um, the front end uh, um, project. I use the uh, Visual Studio Code. So here is my Visual Studio Code. I already opened this one. So I just uh, uh, go live. You need uh, you may need to install a uh, plugin which is live server. This live server will allow you uh, run your front end like a uh, web server. So let's start. Hello. What's the population of United States? Okay. Change the color of this page to red. Okay, increase the font size of the bottom. Increase more. Increase to two hundred. Okay, yeah, you can see uh, the fun uh, function call also get working. Um, I already have this. I already dis uh, explained this on the um, another project on this video, uh, but I couldn't give you a quick. Uh, Walk through. Let's go over here. So this is the front end code. The front end code we only have a, a HTML page. This is the UI of the page, and we have the JavaScript code. This JavaScript code is uh, like trying to get the SDP information from this URL. This URL is what you have uh, over here. Your this is your uh, receipt for API. So basically, it's uh, listening on this port. So the client side trying to access uh, uh, this uh, receipt for API and uh, return the SDP back to the um, web client. Here is how it's working. Uh, this is a functioning call. We just uh, uh, set up the function. Uh, uh, we just uh, 
set up the uh, function yeah over here so mm, let's just get the current page let's get change the background change the text color and I did not demonstrate all of them but I do demonstrate this one uh, this is uh, some regular uh, um, web RTC stuff um, the let's take a look at the, the button so I have the uh, start button once we click the start button we will start the WebRTC so when we start WebRTC we just uh, uh, set up the um, uh, the uh, peer connection here is the peer connection and uh, the data channel uh, this is some uh, very regular uh, WebRTC stuff once we have this one once we have this uh, object initialize we set the local description SDP this is local uh, SDP and uh, we request the um, remote SDP once we have the local SDP and the and the remote SDP uh, we get them set up so the connection will automatically created so you don't need to care about uh, um, uh, the hardware stuff like uh, the speaker the uh, audio the microphone you don't need to care about that the WebRTC will take care of that this is uh, why I think that is why uh, OpenAI is trying to support the WebRTC because that is much easier for the developer to get everything uh, working um, yeah this is some regular uh, WebRTC stuff so the on something new the only thing we find is new we find is new is just uh, the request the SDP from the uh, OpenAI uh, from the you know, Python backend but the Python backend also request the uh, request the stuff from the open AI so it, it's kind of like a proxy we, the reason we have this because we don't want the uh, API key display over here we don't want it to dis uh, request the open AI uh, URL directly if we do that we have to put the API key over here that will be your your that will not save your uh, key will expose to everyone uh, yeah, that's a function uh, function call. Function call we uh, we have the uh, session update. So once the session update, we set up the um, we could uh, uh, initialize the function call stuff over here. And uh, here is the real function. Real function is over here. Yeah. You can, you guys can take a look. Uh, uh, this one is pretty uh, uh, easy to implement the WebRTC, and the WebRTC is much easier than the WebSocket. You don't need to talk with the very lower end hardware. You don't need to take care of the noise uh, canceling, the uh, feedback canceling stuff. I take, uh, I took a lot of time to take care of that one when I uh, created the Web WebSocket uh, 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 demo. So this is much easier for the developer to take care, take care of the the audio, the stream. Yeah, I think that's pretty much all for this video. If your guys have more idea, if your guys have some uh, requirement uh, need to implement this in uh, another um, platform, let me know. I can uh, help your guys, and please subscribe to my uh, channel. Okay, thank you. Bye.